Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is series 301. And the topic is still, we're still talking about struggle. Christians struggling with sin, which it is a growing process. Um, it's a maturity that we have to grow in to be like Christ. So this is what we have to understand that all struggles are not bad. These are good struggles. These are ones that God can find us worthy to be like Christ. When we go through them and when we ask Christ to help us to get through them because we're weak and he is strong. And plus, he's done this before. So the Holy Ghost is here to help us. He promised he would send a keeper, someone that would help us get through it. And he did. So that's why we got to trust in him. And we're going to be talking about Romans chapter 7, verse 19. So we're just going to be on verse 19 for this lesson. And we're going to explain more about this one through some what happened to people in the Bible. And so, uh, Romans 19 says, I want to do what is good, but I don't. Don't want to, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. So, we're gonna go to Romans 1, 28 through 32. And it's going to be talking, the topic is going to be God's anger at sin. Romans um, 1, 28 and 32. Uh, 28 says, since they, thought, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let, and, and let them do things that should never be done. This is what happened to a lot of the people in before uh, Noah's day. These people done whatever they wanted to do. And, and God abandoned them because they didn't know that what they were doing was sin. So they did everything. And uh, God was very angry at them very angry so this is what we have some to, even today we have people that's doing in and everything anytime they want to what they want to and they add more on the list and um you can find some church folks doing the same thing um so this is why god paul is writing this letter to the to the uh romans to let to get them to understand you're going through a struggle, but don't give up. Uh, just keep going forward. 29 says, their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, uh, quarreling, deception, mal uh, malicious behavior, and gossip. Number 30 says, they are backbiters, haters, God, uh, haters of God, uh, insolent, insolent <clears throat> proud, and boastful. They, they invite new ways of sinning. <clears throat> and they destroy, no, no, they disobey their parents. 30, 31 says, they refuse to understand breaking their, no, break their promises um, they are heartless and have no mercy. Number 32 says, they know God's justice requires that those, those who do, those who do these things deserve to die. Yet they do not, yet they do them anyway. See, this is what Paul was saying. I don't want to do wrong, but I do it anyway. And these people do the same thing. 
They know what they know right from wrong, but they continue to do wrong anyway. The fair, this I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Israelites, they knew right from wrong, but they continue to do wrong anyway. Um, worse yet, they encourage others to do to do them to do them too. They can encourage other folks to do the same thing. Because, you know, uh, most folks don't want to stand alone. They want somebody else to join them, like Satan. He didn't want, want to stand alone in heaven doing the wrong thing. So what did he do? He got other angels in heaven to do the same thing he was doing, to rebel against God. And so this is what happens in this struggle. We rebel against the word of God. He's, and Paul said, I want to do what is good. He said, but I don't do it. Because he can't find that power, that, that Christ power to hold on to, to do what's right. He don't, people don't want Christ to work through them. They want to do it themselves. And that's the problem that we find. It's what I did. Just like Satan what I want to do. There were seven deadly sins I call eyes uh, that, 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 that um, Satan said he, what he wanted to do. As a matter of fact, in this lesson right here, all the way from 14th verse to the 25th verse, Paul uses nothing but eyes. Just like he said, I want to do, want to do, I want to do what is good. Then again, he said, I don't. Again, I want to do, I do not want to do wrong. But I do it anyway. You see, I, he's always using I because he's the problem. God ain't the problem. Satan ain't the problem. It is him. He's the problem. So we are our own worst enemy. We are the problem. Um, but we have to come to, we have to come to realize that we are our prop, we are our, our own worst enemy. Um, just like Adam and Eve, they were their own worst enemy. They believed anything. And we are the same way, we believe anything sometimes. And we can't afford to do that. We have to take the word of God and believe the word of God and what the word of God says. Uh, the second cross reference scripture is Mark. 5, 1 through 19. And this uh, topic for this is Jesus healed the demon. Healed a demon possessed man. This is good. I like this one here. <clears throat> this is the one that the Lord gave me to speak on for you guys. And it sh it, I'm just going to go through it and show you what the Lord showed me in it. And this is when you really can go too far into your sin. And then you become, then you be, wind up having a reprobated mind. This is when God will turn you over to Satan and just let him tear your butt up. And, um, but God still loves you in the process. Even though he allowed Satan to do what he did to Job, he still loved Job. His love never stops. It never ends. But he allowed things to happen to us. He allows Satan to do things to us to bring us back sometimes to bring us back where we need to be. You know, like the prodigal son, it brought him back to realize in his mind, you know what, I had it good at home. I need to go back to my father's house, you see. And so here, it's, it's, it's basically the same. It says, uh, number two says, when Jesus uh, climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him. This is a demon-possessed man. The man saw him, ran and meet to meet him, and bowed low before him. This is a demon-possessed man came to Jesus and got down on his knees and bowed before Jesus. 
He bowed down. A demon possessed man. Number seven says, with a stick, with a stick, he uh, he claimed, "Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God?" I mean, this demon even knew God. In the name of God, he said. That's what the demon said. I beg you, don't torment me. He said, don't torment me. Because you know, Jesus, he already knew Jesus was going to cast him out anyway. And then uh, number eight says, for Jesus had already said to the spirit. Isn't that what he's saying now? To that spirit, he said, come out of that man. You evil spirit. This is what Jesus said. Jesus called that spirit as it was. It was an evil spirit that was sent by the devil. Number nine says, then Jesus demanded, what is your name? And he replied, this is the spirit talking to Jesus that coming out of the man. My name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. He said, my name is Legion because there's many of us inside of this man. But why have you come to torment me? So now you see why the man couldn't do nothing. Now you see why the man, he wanted to do good. At one time he probably was a good person and he did good, but he got into sin and it got worse and worse and worse. Just like the prodigal son. It got worse and worse and worse. But this this brother, he winded up with many demons in him. You see? Sometimes we can get out there in that sin, and that sin is so tough, you meet up with some demons you can't get rid of. You see? And um, that's why the, the demons came running to Jesus and bowed down. Because they knew Jesus was Lord. And he, they couldn't, they couldn't escape if they wanted to. So okay, I'm going over there where Jesus is. Then I can't run because he's gonna call me if I run 20 miles from here. He can still call my name and call me out of the man. So I'm going over here and say, why you come to torment me? This is what the demons is really thinking. And number ten says. Then the evil spirit begged him and again and again not to send them to some distant place. Some distant place like hell. You see what I'm saying? No, no, I'm having a party up here in these people, in this man. I'm having a party. I don't want to leave yet. This is what the demon was afraid of, that Jesus was going to send them back where they belong. And guess what he said? He wanted to remain up there. He wanted to remain on top of earth, not down in the earth. And so then he said, number 10 says, no, no, number 11, uh, that uh, there happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Number 13 says, so Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. This is the punishment that they got for being into that man. They came out and they had to go. See, once Jesus say something or speak the word, it, 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 has, to, it has to be done. It has to be carried out. And they knew that. This is why they begged Jesus to, again and again, not to send them to a distant place like hell. Number 14 says, Then herdsmen fell to the, fell to the nearby town, flee to the nearby town, and the surrounding countryside spread the news as they ran, people rushed out to see what had happened. Number 15 says, 
a crowd uh, soon gathered around Jesus and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legions of demons. See, because the, this, this man was in a, he was only in cave. He couldn't be around people. I mean, he, you couldn't even chain, they tried to chain him, chain him up and hold him down in the cave. It wouldn't happen. He was so strong, he would just break the chains and escape. So these people knew these people was in the cave, but they wouldn't go there. It was a dangerous place to go. Um, okay, let me read the rest of this. He was sitting there fully clothed and uh, uh, perfectly sane. This is after the demons left. And they were all afraid. Number 16 says, Then those who had seen uh, what happened told the other about the demon-possessed man and the pigs. Number 17 says, And you know how the news break? They're going to tell everybody. Uh, number 17 says, And the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. They were so afraid that Jesus was going to come in there and cast out some demons within them. So they, they pleaded with Jesus to leave and go and leave them alone. You see, and, and that when Jesus around, when the presence of God around, evil people don't want to be around presence. The real presence of God, oh no, they can't stand it. They cannot be around what belongs to Jesus. If you live for Jesus and you are holy and sanctified and the presence of God is on you, evil people don't want to be around you. They're quick to leave. Or they quick want you to leave. Either one. Uh, but here's what happened to the man. Listen at this. Number 18. As Jesus was sitting into the boat, the man who the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. This man wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to be a disciple of Jesus because he knew as long as he was with Jesus, he was good. Won't nobody go mess with him. You see what I'm saying? Those demons ain't gonna, those demons ain't gonna have a chance to come back because he had already been struggling anyway. He knew his state of being better than anybody. So he wanted to make sure he was around a person that could cast demons out just in case something might happen to him again. You see what I'm saying? So that's where the struggle is. The struggle is holding on to Christ. Holding on to him and not turning him loose. But then number 19 says, but Jesus said, no, go home to your family. Jesus could have asked him to be one of his disciples, but he didn't. And tell them everything that the Lord has done. For you are, you, you are, you, for you and how merciful he has been. Go home and tell your, your family members how merciful that I have been to you. Jesus wanted him to go and spread the good news too. Because they want, he want, Jesus wanted everybody to know about Jesus, the son of the living God. And, and here you can see where this man now had a chance to grow in Jesus. At one time he said, I want to do what is good, but I don't. Just like Paul. I don't want to do wrong, but I, that's what I do anyway. So now since God has freed you, we're free now. Since he freed you, don't go back and do the wrong thing again. This is what the Lord is trying to tell all of us. Don't go back and do what's wrong because you don't want something to happen to you and you might not be able to get back. But the thing is, once you belong to Christ, you're his child. He's he going to take care of you. Trust me. As long as you keep going forward. Now let's go down to another incident. 
and this is about um, in the book of Acts, uh, Acts five one through eleven, and this is about this is about Ananias and Sapphira, and these this was a couple. That and, and this is the funny thing about this is these two people had just came out of the out of the um, the, the upper room uh, where the Holy Ghost sped it abroad and everybody received the Holy Spirit. This is what's so unique about this. They received the message from God and from Peter. But yet they did what the devil always do. They put a little twist in it. So let's read this and see what happened. Um, number one says, but there was a certain man named Ananias who, with his wife, Sapphira, Seph Sephiriah, sold some property. See, this is what they did when, when the upper room, when the Holy Ghost fell on everybody, the Holy Ghost told them to go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Okay? This is what they did. This is what... Um, Peter required, required them to dip after the Holy Ghost had spoke to him. And the only thing he wanted, the Holy Spirit wanted, was everybody to have equal share of property and land and money so that nobody would think themselves better than nobody else. Everybody would become equal. And then um, number two, he brought parts of the money to the apostle, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife consent, he kept the rest. Him and his wife got to get together and say, okay, we, we gonna give Peter this much, but we gonna keep this, okay? Don't that sound familiar? Don't that sound like Adam and Eve? And see, that's why I tell you, husband, you're the head. Um, what's his name? Adam was standing right there when Eve messed up. He could have stopped her. Okay. Like I said, it can go both ways now. It could be the woman and she has a chance to tell the husband, no, we can't do that. Why do both of y'all want to go down the same trail? Why do both of y'all want to go to hell? No, 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 no. You got to understand one thing. Husband and wives, you got to understand one thing. Christ is first in your life. Your husband is second. You don't go to hell for your husband. You understand what I'm saying now, right? Don't allow your husband to tell you something that's against the word of God and you do it anyway. Wife, do not allow your husband to tell you something and you do it anyway. Don't do it. Don't go down that road. These are two perfect ex examples of husband and wives messing up. And both of y'all get cursed. Don't do it. I'm not going down like that. My soul means too much. Look at Job. Job didn't do it. Because why? God was first in his life. When his wife came to him and said, won't you curse God and die? Job said, oh, no, no, no. What, what do you think? What? If I do that, what lips am I going to uh, praise God with? No, I refuse to do that. That's foolish, woman. So why do you want to go down the same crooked road of corruption that he or she want to go down? You don't want to do that. And you see here why I tell you you don't want to do it. Number four says, um, number three says, and then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your hearts? Who filled his heart full, full of that mess? Satan did. Satan is the corporate all the time. He's that evil spirit that comes to you, tell you what the wrong thing to do. Jesus told Peter the same thing. 
when Peter tried to tell Jesus, don't go to Jerusalem. He wanted to rebuke Jesus. Peter, rebuke Jesus? No. And then Jesus said, Satan, get behind thee. Get behind thee, Satan, because we let Satan speak through our voices sometimes. But we're not aware of it. Because we don't call it like it really is. Here, Jesus calls it like it is. Peter calls it just like it is. Why are you letting, why are you letting Satan, Satan feel your heart? You, you, you lied to the Holy Spirit. And you kept some of the money for yourself. This way he found trouble. He lied to God, the Holy Spirit. That's blasphemy. That's a, that, that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Is a sin that's unforgivable. That's the only one that's unforgivable. God won't forgive you for that. Mm, 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 mm. My God, my God. Number four says, the property was yours to, to, to sell or not to sell as you wish. And after selling it, the money was 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 also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You wasn't lying to us, but to God. He was lying to God. That's an unforgivable sin. And you know already know God can't stand a liar no way. Because Satan is the author of lies, the confusion. Number five says, so now there's a struggle here. And this is what Paul is trying to tell us. There is a struggle. There is a struggle. I want to do what is good, but I don't. Seth Ryan and Ananias wanted to do what was good, but they didn't. I don't really want to do what's wrong. I know they didn't. But they did anyway. You see? They did it anyway. But now they're going to pay a cost, a high cost. Hmm. Okay, number five says, As soon as Ananias heard this, these words, he fell to the floor and died. He fell to the floor and died. Everyone who heard about it was terrified. I guarantee you that's terrifying. You fall dead and die? Oh my God. Number six says, Then some young men got up, wrapped him in a sheet, and took him out and buried him. Now that's Ananias. Now, Sephiroth, she got a chance to say the truth now. Let's see what happens. Uh, number six says this. Then some young man, oh no, 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 number seven says about three hours later, three hours later now, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Number eight, Peter asked her, was this the price you and your husband received for this land, for your land? You know what she said? Yes. She replied, that was the price. We got a problem now. We got a problem. Now both of them want to lie. I mean, are you really going to stick beside your wife? Or your husband? And they lying to God? Is it really worth it? Just like uh, 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 Abraham. It was that woman that you gave me was the reason. Not Abraham, I'm sorry. Adam. It was that woman you gave me was the reason that I did it. That's no excuse. Because you heard the word that God said. You know the word. But yet you do it just like Paul. He said, but I don't want to do what's wrong. But I do it anyway. 
Number nine, judgment. And Peter said, how could you two of you, how could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit, to test God now? Don't test God. Oh, no, no, no. Of the Lord, of the Lord like this. The young man who buried you, no, the young man who buried your husband are just outside the door. And they will carry you out too. See, once you have said that, you can't grow those words back. It was too late. It was too late. You can't even repent after that. It won't do you no good. Guess what happened number 10? Verse 10 says, instantly she fell to the floor and died. I want to do what's good, but I don't. I don't want to do what's wrong, but I do it anyway. There's consequences, be there's consequences behind doing it anyway. Number, oh no, okay, let me finish this off. Instantly the woman fell dead on the floor. When the young man came in and saw that she was dead, they, they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Number 11 says, great fear gripped the entire church and everyone else who heard what had happened. Do you really want that to happen in your church? Do you really want to test God? Do you really want to test him? And he punish you in this way. Because you refuse to obey him. Don't test the Lord. Because you're not going to get in. And nothing good is going to come out of you. And so now we're coming to the conclusion, uh, the conflict that we have in the flesh. Paul describes it almost exactly as he did before in Romans chapter 7, 15. In verse 15 and 19, they talk about the same thing. But read, but read it again in uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 19. For the good that I will do, I do not do. But the evil I will not do, that I practice. And, 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 and that's the thing about it. We're, this is a practice thing that we keep practicing over and over. A desire that we have in our body. You have to desire to lie. That's a spirit. That's a demonic spirit that you have to keep on lying. A sexual spirit. That's a that's a demonic spirit that you keep on having sex. Out of wedlock. That's a demonic spirit. And it takes God, the power of God, to break it. And then it says, Paul must have been an athlete. I don't know a better way to illustrate this. Uh, this truth than to play than than playing sports. I know what I do. I've been so I've been shown a hundred times in basketball. My coach showed me a hundred times what to do, but sometimes I just couldn't do it. I keep on doing things the same old way. By people who really know how to play the game. Some of them are some of them are pros, but I just don't do what they tell me. This is the whole problem. We dis we do disobedient. We don't want to do what Christ say do. Just like when our coach, the girls team, out of the college, some of those girls they didn't want to do what we told them to do. They, their mind was somewhere else. Everybody came to the team. They didn't come for the same reason. They were just there. They just was get away from. They wanted to get away from home. They wanted to be around other girls. They came there because 
they wanted to uh, the other they wanted men in the stands to see them so they could just be with a man different reason for being in church different reason for being on the basketball team right now we on jesus team we got to be on the same team for the same reason um, then it says, I, mm, no, and I don't have any more control over one, no, over some other areas of my life. I don't have any more control over some other areas in my life. So if I'm weak here, sexually, I'm weak in lying. If I'm weak in lying, I'm weak in stealing. If I'm weak in stealing, I'm weak, I'm weak in judging people. You see, we're weak in so many of these areas. But we need God to continue to carry us so that we can be strong. Believing in Christ is the key. Areas of my life than I do over a game than I do over a game ball. Um, I want to, but my will, there you go, my willpower alone is not enough because my will is trained to sin. You see? My willpower is trained to sin. And that, again, is the cause. Because of my willpower. It's trained to sin. It has the, the sin, the spirit of Satan. Christ is trying to put his spirit in us. God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, to train us in the way that we must go. The way that we must follow Christ. You see, as, as he follows the Father, we follow Christ. We have to be servants of Christ followers of Christ not bosses God don't need no bosses I don't care whether you're a bishop, pastor I don't care whether you're evangelist, prophet I don't care we don't need bosses we need servants that's what Jesus tried to illustrate when he, when, when he told his disciples he got ready to go it, now they want to know who's going to be the boss no he said those are the least of you must be the servant. That's who's going to be the greatest. If you know how to serve, if you know how to be loving, if you have learned how to be loved, if you have learned how to love your neighbor, if you have learned how to love God through loving your neighbor, if you have learned how to love your enemy, then you will be my servant and you will be the greatest. Why? Because you will always have a humble spirit. And you will treat people in, in a loving way. This is the key to being in the kingdom of God. There's no bosses in heaven. And there's definitely no bosses on earth. Sure, you got authority. That's true. But you have the authority to be a servant. And a loving servant at that. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. God keep you. I pray that you're learning what God really wants you to know and understand. God bless you. Until we see each other again. Amen.